we're really in a situation where we're waiting, uh, waiting to see how data pan out from um, the UK and Denmark, which um, I've been using as uh, at least good indicators of how things may progress uh, and waiting for data from the East Coast, which clearly has entered its Omicron wave uh, much earlier than uh, we have here and much of the rest of the country. So that head start gives us a, a bit of a, a clue about uh, what to expect as well, uh, as Delta uh, appears to be receding a bit here, uh, but Omicron has, has yet to hit us. Um, for, reasons that are not completely clear yet. So from the global perspective, this is what's happening with Omicron. I think a couple of things to point out. First of all, you can see that uh, Western Europe has now really heated up. Uh, and this appears to be now primarily over the last few weeks driven by Omicron. Uh, certainly that's the case in the UK and Denmark, but it looks as if other countries in Western Europe, as you can see on the map, that really uh, burgundy color uh, indicates very high transmission rates, and, and that appears to be much of uh, much of Western Europe. Um, the other areas that are taking off, obviously, are North America, primarily the U.S. Uh, again, with the Delta wave that we have been experiencing, and now Omicron. Interestingly, if you look at South Africa, their um, epidemic curve for Omicron has come down, uh, and that continues over the last. Uh, week to two weeks. Um, and, and that is uh, apparently a, a, a real trend and not artifact. So um, that is not necessarily unexpected. Um, and with a, a variant that has a growth rate uh, and an epidemic curve as steep as it was, you would expect it to, to peak quickly and to come down. Um, but I think there's a couple of things about South Africa that are worth keeping in mind. For, second of all, sorry, I, I, I can't put up the um, hospitalization data from South Africa now because our, uh, uh, our firewall here at the hospital won't let me pull up that one, uh, that one website. But uh, looking at it um, over the weekend, um, their hospitalization rates have, have increased significantly, but not to the proportion which you would expect given their case curve. But a couple of things to keep in mind about South Africa. First of all, um, if you remember, South Africa experienced a wave of the, the beta variant, uh, which originated in South Africa in uh, mid to late 2020 and caused a, a pretty large uh, epidemic, as you can see there. And beta shares a number of um, spike protein mutations with uh, Omicron. And so there is. Uh, some consideration that there may be better cross-protective immunity between beta and Omicron than Delta or other variants that have circulated uh, elsewhere in, in the U.S. and in uh, Western Europe. So um, South Africa and must, much of Africa were really the primary geographic regions to experience a beta wave. And, and if there is cross-protective immunity, then uh, the rest of the world really doesn't have the benefit of that uh, as South Africans do. The other thing to keep in mind is if you look at the bottom, those are demographic population trees uh, where each stack bar represents a, a different five-year period. And you can see that that red line is drawn uh, at 60 years old. And um, there's clearly one country in these four, the, the US, the UK, Denmark, and South Africa. There, there's one country that's not like the others, and, and that's South Africa. And that's true of most developing countries where their population is heavily skewed towards younger persons, uh, and they do not have nearly the proportion of elderly uh, as Western countries do. And that's obviously going to be a significant uh, confounder if you're trying to compare hospitalization and mortality data uh, between a country like South Africa and the U.S. or Western Europe, <clears throat> because they have significantly fewer of the highest risk people for hospitalization and, and death with COVID. And so that also may uh, significantly affect how comparable South Africa's experience will be uh, with Europe and the U.S. Moving on to the U.K. and Denmark, um, we can see here again that both countries have experienced just massive waves of um, uh, Omicron over the last couple of weeks, um, Denmark exceeding 200 cases per 100,000 per day, 
Um, the UK above 150. So these are obviously by far the highest case rates that they have had uh, during the pandemic. Now, we're still seeing this decoupling factor between cases and hospitalizations, uh, similar to what we saw with Delta uh, in the UK. You can see that from uh, the nadir here in November of this Delta wave, at least, uh, there's been a fourfold increase in cases in the UK with Omicron now. And compared to their peak back in January of 21 with the Alpha variant, uh, they uh, are over 200% uh, in terms of cases compared to what they saw back in, in January. So much, much higher case burden in the community than they have ever previously seen. Nevertheless, their hospitalization rate is still only roughly 30% of the peak. Uh, that it was in January of 2021. So uh, a huge jump in cases, but a very modest jump in hospitalizations, as Matt, I think, effectively pointed out. And so they're still seeing this significant decoupling effect, e potentially even slightly more than the decoupling that they saw previously during the Delta wave, uh, indicating that um, at least in a population that's highly vaccinated and highly boosted at this point, uh, we're not seeing a huge surge in hospitalizations with Omicron, uh, at least yet. Uh, and again, important to note that they're still early on in this epidemic, they're still going up. Uh, and so hospitalizations may take some time to catch up. Uh, if you look at um, Denmark, you can see that uh, the, the rate of hospitalizations uh, is actually significantly increased, although you know still at a relatively low number compared to where they were previously. And, and Denmark had a, a relatively low hospitalization rate, even back in their previous peaks uh, because of their effective non-pharmaceutical interventions. Um, you can also see that their uh, ICU and ventilator rates have increased even more modestly. And, and so uh, some hope, but still there's, there's movement there. Again, got to be careful comparing ourselves to these other countries because first of all, uh, their overall vaccination rates, so you can see Denmark almost 80% of the entire population is, is fully vaccinated. In the UK, that's 70% uh, in the US, we're down around 60%. And then looking at boosters, especially the UK and, and Denmark are well ahead of us uh, over twice our uh, booster rate uh, compared to the US. And so those two factors, I think, are gonna weigh heavily in their decoupling effect that they're having compared to what we are going to see here in the US and particularly <clears throat> in places like Nebraska, where we have even lower rates of, of boosting uh, than many other states and, and certainly in rural areas. Now, looking at the East Coast, where again, they have a head start <clears throat> and I think will be a good indicator. Uh, New York City uh, in particular has had an incredible spike of cases. Um, <clears throat> when you look at 275 cases per 100,000 per day is just an astronomical rate higher than uh, really what anywhere else in the US has recorded uh, other than a, just a couple of uh, random counties. And again, New York has very um, widespread testing availability. So their case ascertainment is much higher, uh, but still <clears throat> this is obviously a massive spike compared to where they were previously at almost five times the number of cases they had at their previous peak back in uh, early 2021. Nevertheless, you can see their hospitalization rate still has only gone up uh, modestly, uh, and that's a good sign. So they're still now higher than what they had had with that previous Delta wave peak that they experienced uh, in September. But um, again, compared to their overall case count, uh, not near what one might expect. Now, uh, it does appear that Omicron is by far the dominant variant there in New York City, and essentially, given that there's two weeks here where they're not counting data because uh, of just the uh, noise and, and that they were already over 60 percent two weeks ago given the doubling time of omicron what we've seen in other places clearly uh, essentially just about all of the virus in new york city i think one can anticipate is now omicron and delta has been completely replaced um, when you look at hospitalizations however uh, on the region uh, and not just in New York City. <clears throat> and again, there's probably uh, areas in, in region two, uh, which is essentially New York and New Jersey. Um, there are sections of that region where Omicron may not be dominant yet. And so there's uh, probably a lot of data mixed in, de delta mixed into these data, sorry. 
Um, but you can see that hospitalization rates have, have gone up considerably. And if you start breaking it down by age group, uh, what is I think concerning is that hospitalization rates um, for uh, kids, oops, sorry, age zero to 17, you can see there have shot up uh, hugely. So over twice what their previous peak has been. And that has occurred just really in the last week uh, to two weeks. And so we are seeing a, a massive jump in hospitalizations in children uh, in this region where Omicron has really taken off. Uh, and this is, uh, I think, a concerning sign. Now, again, still a, a small absolute number when you're talking about overall hospitalizations compared to uh, you know, the more vulnerable senior citizens. But, but nevertheless, we're seeing a lot more hospitalizations in kids uh, reported, and, and the data is bearing that out as well. When you look at region one, which is New England, which uh, is a little bit behind uh, where the New York region is, um, you're seeing that same trend here, higher hospitalization rates in, in kids uh, compared to previous spikes uh, and uh, modest growth in hospitalization for overall uh, population. Now, again, we're, we're comparing regions of the country that have very high vaccination rates and, and relatively high booster rates, um, you know, compared to the Midwest and many other sections of the country. And so we're seeing some of this decoupling effect similar to what we're seeing in the UK and Denmark, um, but that decoupling effect may not be as pronounced, uh, and especially in younger um, populations because of the low vaccination rates in those demographics. And also when you get out again to our part of the country where we have much lower vaccination rates, that decoupling effect may be even less pronounced. So uh, again, we're in a waiting game. game. We have to wait and see how this plays out over the next couple of weeks. But um, I, I think there are, um, certainly some concerning signs about uh, hospitalizations and particularly in, in younger folks that we need to keep our eye on. So that's all I have. Thanks, Shelley.